<sighs> well, good morning, everybody. Um, this is a this is round two of um, of Leaders Live. We were supposed to go out yesterday, and we had a great audience on board. And uh, the audio issues just uh, plagued us yesterday. So fix those now, folks. So I just wait for the live feed to come up, and you can listen to this lovely music by uh, my uncle Peter. Good old Uncle Peter and Minor Blues. Uh, yeah, I, I, I keep saying I claim this is my own. Um, it's not. It's his. But um, he's uh, he's very happy for me to use this. I'm just waiting for the live feed to come up. Here we go. Great live feed is up. Um, and yeah, I think uh, Graham Ro Graham Rose is on this morning. I think so. Good morning to you, Graham. So yeah, we're just counting down. Be there in a minute. Just settle in with a countdown timer. Yeah. There we go. All right. And we are in. Let's just get rid of the music. So, good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's a Wednesday morning here in the UK. So, usually a Tuesday, but it's a Wednesday. I'll explain that in a moment. And we are just after 8 45, and we are live, 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 spreading the love this morning on round two. Um, really you know, apologies for yesterday. We had audio issues yesterday. We just couldn't continue. Turned out it was actually a wired um, iPhone that I'd wired up wrongly to my computer. I'd, I'd put the wrong cable into it. Instead of the charging cable, I'd put another cable into it and it was creating a huge infinite feedback loop. So, uh, and thanks to all you fab folk for being understanding and supportive after that issue you know as you can imagine I was a bit kind of like shell shocked after that really appreciated um your love and support thank you very much folks and uh, but this is live baby and anything can go wrong anything can happen so talking about live we're streaming out live on LinkedIn YouTube two Facebook groups and Twitter Bloody brilliant. Can't believe it. Absolutely fantastic. So good morning. Um, good afternoon. Good evening. You know, wherever you are in the world to this. Uh, welcome to this Leaders Live Breakfast Show. Round two, as I said. Now, a few weeks ago, we had Sonia Holm um, in the show, on the show, chatting about behaviour preferences and profiling using Colour Me. And there was a huge amount of interest from that. So today I'm going to we're honouring that to look talk about DISC and by popular demand, I'm I'm. We, people wanted some some stuff on disc, so I'm joined today by my good friend and disc expert Rob Scott, you know, to give us a perspective on prof profiling and performance and using disc to new elite levels, and we'll find out what that means shortly, I'm sure. So, good morning, Rob. How you doing, buddy? Good morning. Yeah, very well, thank you. Good. You're looking well and loving the hairstyle. As usual. <laughs> thank you. Spreading the love, as they say. So, um, yeah. Um, Glad to see you on the show today, and thank you for being, you know, able to make today after yesterday's audio disaster, as they say. So, um, folks, listen, um, please give me um, some thumbs up or um, just a quick OK that the audio is good this morning for us, and that you can hear us both um, tickety boo. That would be really helpful. Thank you very much. Come back to you in a moment. Just a tick, Rob. Um, just a quick teaser. Look, in this rapidly changing world. Um, you know, the difference that will make the difference to success or failure is the people factor. And, you know, this has been hiding in plain sight under our noses all this time. And through this pandemic, I think things have, have happened and have brought a lot of this stuff up to the surface. We'll be talking about that today. Um, the DISC instrument, um, we're going to explore um, a little bit today for measuring behaviour preferences. We're going to look at the last 20 months, how that's impacted our behaviours as human beings and potentially for years to come, actually. And also the wellbeing agenda, which is a top boardroom agenda right now you know how does how can we possibly measure derailing behaviors and thoughts and behaviors um, early enough to help us head off mental health and benefit both business and individuals so we're talking about that today and if behavior is so predictable how can we learn to adapt our own behaviors that bring out the very best of us and the very best version of ourselves and also how the disc process profiling instrument you know helps us to promote high performance in this rapidly changing world all this and a lot more in our interview chat um so please tell us um please you know, interact with us today um you know if you're new to leaders live please say hello in the comments if you don't know me i'm andrew jenkins you know as always we love 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 to interact with you chat with us and put stuff in the comments we'll pick them up you know especially ask questions and comments as we're going along um, as I said we'll pick them up don't be shy folks smash those likes too folks and really appreciate that and it keeps us motivated along the way as well so please do all of those things for us 
Um, not seeing any comments yet at the moment. I hope that comments feed's coming through. So um, uh, please, please, please subscribe to Leaders Live on my all new website page. I'll put the link in later on and uh, YouTube as well. And please, you know, as I said, please let us know everything's coming through OK for you guys. So back to you, Rob. Let's um, let's give you a round of applause even before you start. <laughs> uh, feel the love, Rob. Feel the love. Feeling yeah. it today, Snuggle Puss. Feeling it today. <laughs> okay, sweet cheeks. There we go. <laughs> so, look, Rob, I've got to ask, you know, briefly, you know, how did you go from international professional rugby and you know, playing for Scotland to, you know, elite profiling using disc? You know, tell us that little bit of a story. You know, get us going on that. Yeah, well, um, I was quite different in the sense of uh, pro rugby went in 96, became professional. So before then, I was working. So I was at top yeah. end amateur rugby. So I was already in corporate life uh, and progressing through there and playing rugby. Right. I had to play rugby. I had to go to the professional side. I had the, the itch to scratch. To the itch to like. scratch. I love the that. The <laughs> itch to scratch and see yeah. what it was like. Um, yeah. And it was an interesting uh, five years uh, that I was uh, performing out there and delivering. Yeah. It's probably the tough. Oh, Rob, you're frozen. Map, yeah. So tough, toughest five years. You said you're just temporarily frozen there, Rob. And that enabled me to uh, then look at the issues that I've been going through and what I'd seen out there, which was people. The people issue. The people factor. Back to that people factor again, Rob. Yeah. So I don't know if we've lost you, Rob. Um, it seems like um, we've lost your connection i think um can you just let me know folks if that oh yeah well, he's gone so um julie just thank you very much for um for saying hello you're still in the midst of cop 26 just waiting for rob to reboot here we go he's on again let's just bring him into the uh uh okay let's just bring him back in again one second here we go just assign him to the guest there we are right rob you're back how are you doing had a had a glitch uh, in the matrix froze, there rob so, so i just refreshed yeah, no problem at all. I'm just that. just saying hello to uh, to Julie Wales while you were you were on. Yeah, <laughs> sorry while you were off. So hi Scott as well. Great to see you online. So brilliant. Um, so the last five years that was tough, and then you decided that it's actually the people factor that you felt was important, and that was the bridge to um, to picking up disc as a. Uh, as uh, absolutely, and yeah. I went back into corporate life, and I've had many fancy titles: CEO, CEO, <laughs> working around the world. Yeah. But the common thread in sport and business, regardless, is people. people. You know, and it was like, and yeah. it was like mitigating the risk in human capital. So I left GE uh, 12, 13 years ago uh, as a senior chief exec. Uh, but it was around people. Uh, forget my title. I was dealing with people all the time, working in strategy execution, high performance in teams and businesses. So what do I what do I do now? I, ident I help people identify their talent as a human being, as a professional, to then to deliver. And there are now much more modern tools that we can work with and look at that's relevant to today and the impacts of COVID. Yeah, nicely linked and uh, even more better tools now. So that's, uh, yeah, we're going to come right onto that. And actually, you know what, look, guys, Rob, he's he's a big fella, right? You know, now I've met Rob a few times. Um, he's seen, he's been, seen me talking at public presentations and things like that it's like a block of granite you know there's that rugby rugby build i mean he's a huge lad and uh yeah, but it's all in proportion you know he's a m very muscular man so uh yeah that's what rugby does for you um so rob talk us briefly through the basics of disc you know we'll talk about its origins a little bit you know the coordinates and stuff so you might want um do you want a little bit of a frame for that so here we go here's a little bit of a frame for you to talk around rob you know early on in my career uh, I was introduced to DISC and, and yeah. other profiling tools, and I loved it. I bought into <laughs> it because it enabled me to see a different view of myself yeah. that went on. Very much the how that I was driven through. So, you know, that that, that basis from Jung, William Marsden, you know, took it, built it. Yeah. Uh, people would say, if you paraphrase what he was looking at, people have said, you know, when I get up in the morning, I don't get up to make someone's day awkward. What happens? <laughs> it's a great way I love to, to phrase it. And, you know, they started to show preferences you know, yeah. that, that built on it. And when I break it down, for me and some other people, it's about preferred communication styles. But there's been a mixture to tag and label behaviors right. and put you in boxes, which I yeah. think is quite tough because let's say there's 8 billion people in the world. How do we fit them into four, eight, four boxes. 16, 32 boxes? There's yeah. so much more to it. But the basis of it is really helpful to see how you're operating, but also how do you land on other people? and yeah. work it through in those areas 
Yeah, so this is a basic um, four grid, but you know, as you said, people are more complex than that, and we, we kind of flip around this. Um, and you know, there's there's a kind of grid um, here, isn't there? So so I think from for you've you, you've got like the thinking and feeling orientation on the the y axis and the x axis going from left to right will be reflective and extrovert, and that kind of links back to Jung's early work, doesn't it? And you know his his whole uh, piece on personality. Um, human development that was written God, early 20th century uh, and a lot of these profiling tools like color me map onto onto this as well so this directly links to or maps to myers briggs as well as the color me profile from sonia home that we talked about the the other day as well and it gets a little bit more detailed than this as well so this is a sort of next level down so where you can start to see some of the granularity and it goes even more granular than this as we're as we're talking but this is kind of the next level down where you can see different behaviors around the wheel here and Sonia was introducing something similar in terms of energy levels with with color me. So similar profiles, but they do slightly different things, right? I've lost Rob again. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Well, I'll I'll just keep on talking while uh, while Rob re, uh, rejoins us. Here he is. Right. Super duper. I'll just reassign him. So we've got some network issues today. It's uh, there. You go, Rob. Yeah, you're back in the room again. Back in the room, yeah. Sorry, yeah. No, no problem. Everything's fine, and then when you go live, as we found out, <laughs> yeah, this is live, baby. Things happen. So, uh, David's good morning. Uh, looks fascinating. Super. Thanks, David, for your support. Yeah, we're just having a few network issues this morning. It's just you can't win with live sometimes. So, look, listen, Rob. Let's move on a little bit. The last twenty months, you know, that's impacted us all, not just now, but potentially for years to come. Tell us more, Rob. You know, how does that map onto our thoughts and behaviours, Rob? What's going on? You know. We've been through this COVID thing, haven't we? You know, what's what's going on? Let's so move things for you. We've been doing uh, what we've seen from the stats and mm. all groups coming out. Uh, people are turning around and changing their attitudes towards life, uh, ah, their attitude towards okay. the job, the profession, their bosses and mm. the officers, changing in the way they see things. This noose around the neck that can be very positive, but also it has a level of toxicity that could start to come from it. Yeah. So they don't want to be answerable to the boss, the organization, to their career. Mm. Uh, but when you have to pay the mortgage, go on holiday and want to buy certain things, you have to follow a protocol and yeah. they want to start to break away. So COVID's arrived uh, and we're seeing people now kind of say in their minds, but it's starting to become verbal, I don't want to be responsible for that anymore. I don't want my boss standing over me. I don't want to be responsible for you. The rat race is starting to come out uh, and it's not uh, it's about what I want to do uh, it's not about going to the beach every day but what is the purpose this is one of the big things we've seen is about what is my purpose how does the big picture start to connect systems thinking come together they don't want to subscribe to the old ways now interesting some of the aspects that are coming out there's culture clashes as well so the company in Holland that we're working with on protocols you're not allowed to email before nine or after eight or at weekends. And they're struggling to employ international staff because you've got a clash of cultures. This yeah. just do it versus actually we can work into a more uh, respectable, more caring environment. And this company is worldwide is highly successful. So mm -hmm. sense of purpose, uh, big picture thinking, how does this all fit together and impact? And we're measuring a shift where people technically may sound a bit of a uh, high word, but are rebelling against the systems and the ways they've relied on years and the lifestyle and security. And they're looking people square in the eye and say, you know, yes, you may pay my wages, but I also want to look after me. So there's some of the stuff that coming out. And there's some other interesting stats, Andrew, just to show you a remote oh, book yeah, coming from do. Gartner stats. and Anza. And, you know, Gartner and Anza are saying, you know, again, sounds obvious, but in 2020 and 2021, 50% rise in remote working. 71% rise in experience of burnout. 87% employees are working later, even though you're working from home. An hour yeah. increase of unnecessary meetings, increased time spent duplicating work, and deadlines were missed due to work about work that are going on. So again, it reminds me in 96 when rugby went professional, the mm -hmm. first three to five years, they were finding the new systems and ways, and it was a rocky road. So there's some tension while we're kind of coming out of this post-pandemic into this new new normal world, as it were, and, and there's some, some wobbly factors going on, particularly around uh, people and their values. 
um, their purposes uh, and rebelling against the system, you said. Yeah, I mean, I get that, you know. And those stats are really interesting. And if, if there is a Gartner document that you can share after this, you know, please give me the link and I'll pop it in the description field for people to pick up because those stats are really useful for people. And I'm sure for you guys listening, um, for Julie and David and others and Scott, you know, they might be really useful for you as well. So we'll pop those in if, if Rob's okay to share that certainly. as a link. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Again. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, a question coming in from a LinkedIn user. You know, we may be in the rat race, as you say, Rob. But but what if I don't? What if I don't want to be a rat? <laughs> That's an interesting thought. I'm just gonna. Any any comments on that, Rob? Hey, you don't have to be. You know, it's your yeah. preference. I think when I break it down, and that was a description there. Yeah. People are starting to find their outer voice, yeah. not the inner voice. So okay. we have the mind chatter that goes on. So whatever suits, and we're not dictating in any way what it is, but that's what we're starting to see, yeah. starting to see the blends of. So finding a voice and using it effectively, I think is one of the interesting things that's going to come out of this, but it's also which doesn't land well. So people are going to learn about themselves and they're going to learn new ways of having to interact and take care of other people's views. I think one of the challenges we have at times is we all think we think the same way. Uh, yeah, OK, and I get that. And it's probably a challenge as well going the other way. Um, we've just lost Rob for a minute. So while he just uh, redials in, I think he's got internet issues, his end. Um, oh, here he is again. Super duper. One second. The great thing about this is uh, he can just bring him back in real fast. So that's just fantastic. There we go. You're back in the room again, Rob. Yes, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, it's an interesting challenge, not just for for um, employees, but also employers and being the boss, you know, actually the responsibilities of that um, are interesting in themselves, right? You know, that we probably have to change our own attitudes in terms of managing people as well. And the people factor from a management point of view needs to perhaps change uh, and new skills, right? <clears throat> Absolutely, and, and one of the hardest things is seeing it. Uh, and yeah, some of the stuff spotting we do it. Is we can measure that, which we can touch on later. But yeah. being able to see other aspects that are going on, rather than just intuition or blindly not even looking at it and missing it completely. Missing it completely, right? Yeah. Now, there's also um, another school of thought, and I was chatting to somebody else about. Um, they're, they're they're involved in a very large organisation that do the learning development um, for a huge global organisation, and they're spotting trends in terms of people's profiling shifting quite radically actually during this pandemic and, and post pandemic now and seeing the washout of people's you know if they were sort of red dominant say for instance using your colored chart there or you know red yellow they may change to 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 green yellow what or, you know and move around the circle a little bit have you found any evidence of that from from your point of view rob we certainly have you know yeah. we, a lot of people would look at the adapted behavior Right. We take disc a lot to see what's happening with pressure and stress. But go back to the natural aspect, we're seeing shifts, absolutely. Because right. generally, it's been said over the years, you, your profile is reasonably fixed over the years. Indeed. It's flex, but a, a major event in someone's life, generally a, an emotional event, you can reevaluate what's important to you. COVID, over a period of time where people have reflected, we're definitely starting to see that come through. And again, standing by their conviction, uh, so it's the natural behaviour we're looking at more at the moment than the adapted, so they, they fully understand it. But it's also having a... <laughs> I think I might have just lost you temporarily. Oh, yeah, here he goes again. So I'm just going to bring up Julie's comment while we were just waiting for uh, uh, for Rob to redial. He'll be there in a minute. Here he goes. So, yeah, he's got a flaky connection at his end. So uh, let me just pop him back on. Here we go. Rob, there you go. So um, I want to come back to that adapted behaviour and natural behaviour in a little bit. But Julie says this, um, Julie Wales, morning, Julie. It seems that trust had been missing before the pandemic. Actually, the workforce has proven beyond all expectations that they can effectively continue working remotely. Very true, working from home, right? And it's really important we now continue that trust as it shows how much we value our employees and everything they've achieved against all the odds. Yeah, very well said. But not everybody's doing that, right, Rob? Perhaps? Um, not, not at all. You know, when, when we look at uh, high performance teams, yeah. uh, the work I've done in sport, what I've experienced, corporate, military, a lot of work. Uh, the, the founder of the work we do, Jerry Donaldson's Expression mm. Forces, everything is built on the foundation of trust. 
uh, and other areas would be sacrificed or have lesser involvement by extending trust uh, and that belief and giving the trust out there that people you know can deliver against the deadline do you have to stand over them be around them to ensure they deliver yeah so there's a, a whole new kind of management piece sort of I can feel that tension building you know and something's got to shift there in terms of the way we manage people and this trust factor is hugely important certainly when I'm developing high performing teams that's one of the key skills that, that you know the core, core activities I do in my own business is building trust is you know, it's it's a foundation and it, it, it takes time to do and people to get it as well um, particularly you know, if there's a lot of distrust in an organisation. Um, and that's really the foundation of our culture too, Julie, I guess. Um, absolutely spot on. Uh, David, um, let me just pop David's comments on. Um, David's just come up with this comment, David Wilkes. Um, actually, David's going to be on the show um, shortly next week. In fact, I'm going to be introducing you and shouting you out, David, a little bit later. But David's joined us and he says, look, as business leaders, we have been responsible for our own careers. Yeah. As a strong leader, we should be encouraging our teams in the same way. This trust will build, will will be built up. Yes. Spot on. What say you, um, Rob? I've got some thoughts on that oh, too. What say uh, you? Uh, absolutely. I, I wanted to pick up the point you touched on about time. Yeah. And Julie, you know, um, one of my expertise in business is program management, strategy execution. Yeah. And you've got to spend the time up front building the plan, the blueprint, understanding what's going to deliver, the buying the commitment. It's the same with yeah. trust. You cannot just suddenly throw it out there. You've got to invest it and keep refreshing it and be consistent uh, to what you do with straight talk and demonstrate respect and transparency. And when things go on, address them and fix them. Uh, but it takes time and yeah. you shouldn't rush it. Yeah, I agree. And David's point is really subtle here. I, I really get this. You know, something that I've been talking a lot when I'm coaching um, individuals in corporate organisations, actually, is to remind people uh, or even to float this concept of look you are your career you know you're not a person who's just in this organization as a staff member you know you need to see yourself differently you are your personal brand now the millennium folk get this a lot better than the baby boomers for example of which i'm part of that generation right the, the baby boomers were very much around a different concept of you know you're a staff member you work for the company and and really, you know, I think what what for certainly for me, what this is touching, what David's saying is that you know we are responsible for our careers. For that that's absolutely foundational. You know, look after your own career, and if you're not happy where you are, you move on. You know, or you stay. It's a choice. I mean, you know, because actually, I'm here for my career, and I'm I'm here in this organisation to help me build my own skill set and my own values. And if it suits me and it suits the organisation, and we get on fine, then then you know. Um, tickety boo but if not you know i um i choose to go elsewhere we are our personal careers you know we are our personal brands what any thoughts on that rob yeah, to support I, that I've or spent, not yeah i've spent my career i've made a choice personally to move mm. to different sectors and careers it was kind of same same thing same place that i moved around but yeah. i learned huge amounts <clears> with the by the, the variations of what i got involved in but when i broke it down it still for me it came down to people you know as we built yeah. out I think what's interesting, one of the other information and or the stats and research we're seeing is that we're taking the millennials in various areas, there's going to be a clash on what people want, how they want it, and where they want to work. And people used to be able to get up and leave a job and get another one quite quickly. There are lots of jobs out there that just may not be the ones you want now. So there's an interesting factor on retention uh, or people get up and going and a clash on how people see that they may have to stay in roles they don't want to do. So. It's a bit like uh, systems thinking or the bigger picture. How do you make the system work for you and stop using it as a maybe an excuse and not to deliver and execute? So there's a blend required out there at times. Yeah, and again, that trust factor becomes really important as well there, don't we? Now, Robin, um, morning, Robin, great to see you. Um, I think baby boomers are more inclined to be loyal to their employer rather than... Um, to self and their own career yeah you know i think that's that that's that's a good point and yeah i see it time and time again robin um but it's that reorientation isn't it you know it's it's kind of the world is changing and we need to think about you know networking in our own um 
developing our own networks for our own careers as we move forward. It's a bit of a bit of a mind shift, really. Uh, and but but also this whole thing about trust. And if you want to keep people, then you know you need to build that 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 trust piece. And part of the building of trust comes back to profiling. Actually, you know, in case we people are wondering, well, how, how does this link together? Well, you know, actually doing profiling of your team is really helpful for building. Um, the foundations of trust it's one aspect it's not the whole aspect but it's it's part of it right rob what say uh, you absolutely it's um it gives you that inner depth that you may not see yeah you know, i think sometimes we go back to we all think the same way so we get frustrated well actually we're allowed to think differently and we're not awkward but we can adapt to it and see and the light bulb comes on to go oh actually you're not being awkward here this is how <laughs> it lands or this is what it, it comes out of uh, from where you are and that appreciation uh, is really important. I think the challenging in profiling, if I may say, Andrew, and we can touch again later, yeah. is I think three things happen. One, you get really excited, you do something with it. You partially get excited and do something with it. Or, <laughs> but 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 they all get filed and they get left. And yeah. profiling and this information is about keeping it alive. Yeah, absolutely. Keep looking at it, refreshing it, re-looking at it. And something we'll touch on a bit later, self-awareness. And that's a massive title and subject to, to touch on. But how do you become truly self-aware through this and use, here's a phrase that you probably haven't heard, you may have, Andrew, but others, but how do you use positive manipulation to what you want? <laughs> so you know, I, I call it influence, mate, not manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> well, Just a thought for is. you. Well, you know, manipulation sounds bad, but it does. the Dalai Lama, it's absolutely a, a real powerful uh, area to work with for the right reasons. Right. Well, let's let we'll, we'll come to that, but let's let's move on a little bit. Um, so, a few weeks back, we had David Rogers on the show, and he was chatting about well-being um, being a top boardroom agenda. And we've been touching on this a little bit as we've been floating through this. But and and this really got me thinking. You know, is it possible to measure the kind of derailing thinking patterns and behaviours early enough? So we can help head off mental health issues to benefit both business and individuals. Rob, what say you? Well, we certainly can in the in the area that we're working with, and again, mm. we'll touch on a bit later. And DISC is just one element of the output of what we work to. Uh, but if you go back to even before DISC would come out as an output, which is the how, yes. what's happening with the what and the why, and we're able to measure now from an emotional intelligence point of view and the competencies below important aspects, and they can be configured to client environments or to certain subjects. So for us in well-being, and this is the bit in the market that we're having, making major strides. We work okay. with Metropolitan Police, uh, various organizations. So what do we look at when we look? We, we've got the six dimensions of thought that we measure, intrinsic, extrinsic, and systemic thinking patterns. Mm -hmm. But below that, we're in COVID-1, if I could refer to that, which is fundamentally <laughs> March 2020. Yeah, lockdown uh, we did, one. We did, a, we did a lot of work with the Scottish government, and we did 75,000 reports up there for them in well-being. And we were able to help them understand a person, a team, and an organization's mental health state that you can't see elsewhere, uh, partly because surveys, when you take a survey, depending on what mask you on or how you're feeling, will depend how you how you answer, so how accurate it is. And we work very much on a task-led uh, system that gives us accuracy. So what do we look at? We can measure sense of belonging, sense of purpose, having a plan to deal with that and where you are, your emotional resilience. We also measure the modern world, keeping a pace, depending on where our ages are and what we're doing, the pace is changing and developing our senses. Now, we also work with Dr. Lucy Rattery at Stirling University, where we've done a lot of work that we can now look at the systemic thinking patterns and measure the emotional stability and the propensity to sadly self-harm, depression, and even suicide. We're now working on PTSD so that if these aspects are coming out of people early, you can make intervention to support them or people can no, oh. <laughs> just lost Rob just temporarily. I'm sure he'll dial in again in a moment. Okay, here he comes. He's going to dial in again in a moment. Yeah, I'm going to come on to your comment. Thanks, Rob, for your comment. I'm going to come on to that in a moment. Um, as a oh, here he comes. Right, let's just pop him back in the room. Here we go. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Are you back on? Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm back on. I've been in that a lot today, aren't I? <laughs> Yeah, that's that piece of string that's holding your Wi-Fi together, mate. <laughs> anyway, but that's that's okay. So, um, yeah, you were talking about 
this these extra ways that and this is all part of the disk profiling tool that can measure these additional elements. Is that correct, Rob? These are these are add-ons uh, to the tool, yeah, we, or what's we have going a tool on there? The discovery process. The discovery the is, process, right? The, the disk is the is the last element that comes out of it. But yeah. prior to that, we have the emotional intelligence. And ah. We're not measuring as generally emotional intelligence today looks at your your emotional stability, how you're feeling, how you interact, how you go to. We go back to where it all starts, which is in the mind's eye. Okay. What are you thinking and how are you thinking uh -huh. that determines then how you're motivated, and we can touch on that in a bit, and what your motivators are then equals behaviours that okay. start to come out. So it's seeing, and you can put the analytical, so we can put the scores in. So from business, you can see a re return of investment if you want to go down that route, but for individuals, then how can you move the dial? Where are you? What's going on? And there's no right or wrong score, and there's no judgment. We go okay. up and down in different terrains with our emotional intelligence. And these are measurable with the discovery process tool. And I think, Rob, um, at the end of this, you're going to give away of some, some freebies on this so people can have a taste of it and see how it works. But I'm guessing, it's as you said, it's linked somehow to, to disk, and that's the final output, right? And you see it together with your disk profile. Is that correct? So I can just correct. understand. Yeah, OK, good. Absolutely. So interesting. So we can measure these things, and you can get quite accurate with sort of elements of emotional intelligence and where people are feeling stressed and a difference in stress levels, etc., from before and after pictures and things like that is that is that what i'm hearing you saying rob uh, absolutely you know mm. we're, we ca we're going into mm. the subconscious because we work off a value metric system so it's mathematical algorithms so we kind cool. of remove the emotion to the situation a bit of to offset it now we're well, well, well over five million data sets we've started to do and one of the things that i've seen and i why i developed this with jerry and we built it out there is sometimes you know what's going on but when you then see it on paper the yeah. validation changes the whole interaction to look at it. And when you make no judgment and just say, where are we? What is causing this? Mm -hmm. It's amazing how then how things start to open up and deal with it. I mentioned earlier with the Metropolitan Police, uh, one of the things we saw in the Met Police, as well as the emergency service front line in COVID, yeah. is people weren't getting time to just understand what they just dealt with. And they got a refresh time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes after a call, they were straight into the next call now. Yeah. So this refreshing and it builds and builds and builds. Some very senior officers on the surface, you see full of control, full of command, but underneath, self-deprecating, absolutely putting themselves under right. pressure. Okay. How do you release it? So instead of just talking about it, here are some evidence. Now what can we do about it? It's a terrain. Our emotional intelligence moves all over the place. So you know, mm. if you're on the, if I use a bike analogy, you're in the Pyrenees. You need a mountain bike. The gears are designed to move. If we're in Holland on the flat, we need a Tour de France bike. So we're moving around and there's no right or wrong. It's been able to see it and understand it and adapt to what's going on. Okay. So one, of the stats that, yeah. one of the stats we have, Andrew, is um, a 1% to 3% shift in your emotional intelligence can release anywhere up to 8 to 12% all around in your performance. Yeah, these are the small differences that make the difference, right? You know, um, these continuous gains, but those are big gains as well, Rob. And it's really interesting that when we become aware of our gear changes, our mental gear changes, and become self-aware of those, and the interesting thing is that those are kind of measurable, and you can pick those up within the discovery tool. That's really interesting. Rob Waring brings us back to trust again, and um, I'm just going to just resize this just a little bit here. Love the theme of trust. It's so important. Uh, trust your team uh, in, in you and in them, and there is the trust from your directors to deliver a vision. Let me just bring Rob back in because he's just fallen over again. Here we go. Uh, we're getting used to doing this, aren't we? So uh, yeah, we're just looking at this trust thing from from Rob, and he's talking about you know um, if there's trust with your directors to deliver a vision and the right strategy, and in doing so, building the, these are the building blocks that are laid. So you know, yeah, your senior leaders doing the vision thing, and uh, and and other people executing, and if there's good communication all round and trust of your team to do the roles that they're assigned to, then. Uh, that's helpful, I guess, from Rob. Any thoughts on that there from your perspective? Yeah, Mr. absolutely. Um, the building yeah. blocks are, are the foundations of a lot of things, not just trust that you work on and build to. So uh, the top of the organization sets the tone, sets yeah. the way they operate and how, how vastly more influential than they realize, even on the soft elements than on the, the hard elements that start to go out there. 
Yeah, and and uh, that's really well said, actually. And that picks up on Julie's comment earlier as well, Julie Welsh, that was talking about culture is so important. Absolutely. Um, and and um, yeah, uh, and that that sets the tone. So if it on the well-being agenda, it's about setting that tone too, right? And acknowledging it and working with it. And that's one of the things the, the useful things about your discovery process tool is that it helps you to to measure that and to see how your culture is actually doing in these times of change, which sounds absolutely fascinating. So let's just move it on a little bit. So you know. W- I, what, what always fascinates me, Rob, and I don't know about you people out there, but, you know, when you can use a tool to measure, you know, our behaviours and our thought patterns, it's a bit scary. Isn't it? It's like a matrix moment, isn't it? It's like, for, for heaven's sake, you know, are we really that flipping predictable? And yet, you know, when I've done Myers-Briggs and step one and step two and, you know, detailed disc profiles, I am gobsmacked at how flipping predictable we are as human beings. And that, that kind of that kind of makes me want to grate against the system a little bit. But, you know, why is people prediction, you know, it, 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 on one hand, so it just feels like so damn accurate. But on the other, you know, there's a risk. There's, it's a risky business as well. And how can it bring out the very best version of ourselves? Rob, you know, what say you about this multiple dimensions? Yeah, and this is one of the things that's fascinated me uh, through my career in the various mm. areas. And, and go back to the disc, the Myers Briggs, yeah, etc. I refer to it great tools, but they're kind of one dimensional, right? You know, Boxes. And if you just if you just hold that, there's so much more to us that build up. So how do you build on that? Yeah. So predictability needs to go further and deeper. So from our perspective, we look at a person's attitude. So knowing how they think and make decisions, uh, their talent, so what's their potential, which also then equals their motivators. So uh, we look at motivators a lot, which then start to then enable predicted behaviors. So a three-dimensional view is really important to start to bring out to understand how we can change. Because even under uh, DISC, um, we've got unnatural adapted, there's 40,000 variations they'd say on those charts. We can go to any one of those any of us at any time. We may not stay long there because it's not our preference and we go back to where we are, but we can be affected. But you've got to take the larger picture, the fuller picture to enable what goes on to really start to understand how people work. So one of the things we also see, Andrew, is enabling people. We talked about um, directives setting the tone in areas, but enabling people to, to work in the environment that best suits them, not the company environment, what motivates them it's the it's the TNT, it's the dynamite inside of it. How do you release that energy the and the dynamite. spark, yeah. but give them the give them the environment they want, not what you think you need to give or, or what you want as a boss? Yeah, very well said. I like that actually. Um, and we'll, we'll tease a bit more out of that in a moment. But I'm just going to interrupt this just slightly because there's a LinkedIn user here that's saying, you know. Um, I think this is really well said, actually, you know, so are CEOs self-aware? Well, they may not be, actually. And this is where I think tools like a disk and the discovery process, which you're talking about, which uncover even, even more about us, are so useful, particularly, you know, at team levels, um, anywhere in the organisation, actually. So people can become more self-aware because not all CEOs and senior leaders are actually, you know, have got the innate tools to do this. So part of it is to build the ability and the mindset and the attitude of growth, mindset, you know, attitude, trust, all of those things. You know, they don't come out of the box with any of us, really. Some people are better than others at it naturally, but essentially we all have to learn the tools of, of how to deal with the people factor, right? What say you, Rob? just on that oh, comment yeah absolutely um the work i do with dr tasha ulrich in the us is probably i would suggest the leading person in the world in self-awareness wow and what she's focused on she's quite simply says 10 to 15 percent of the world's population are truly self-aware how many on two, what percentage 10, 10 to 15 <laughs> percent and that's built on two basic principles uh reflection and feedback most people and I would say most when I generalize, we'll talk about reflection. Uh, but the feedback is specific. How do I get true, open, candid feedback to enable me to then deal with my self-awareness? Because they can actually conflict across what you see and what you do uh, and build on. And then how do I keep that alive and keep working with it out there? So it's a massive challenge. And I would suggest a lot of senior roles that are filled are not as anywhere near self-aware as they 
could be for themselves. Could be. And, you know, Robin makes a really good point here. Look, CEOs are people too. You know, we've all got to learn, right? Um, for me, uh, and this might be, you know, if you've not read this book, um, the Working with Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman, it was for me an absolute groundbreaker in understanding the whole emotional intelligence thing, what it actually means and how to develop our self-awareness and why it's so important. You know, And that is just a phenomenal book. For those of you that haven't read it, I really, really highly recommend reading you know some smart books like that and some of the recommendations which which rob has said and you know rob if you want to pop those on the link as well um afterwards we can we can add that into the chat and um so people can grab hold of that and i'll put the um amazon link in for for the book i've just mentioned as well so yeah you know we're all developing right you know and you mentioned that worldwide only 10 percent of people are self-aware well if you take the developed world i guess that percentage might be slightly higher um, but you know, nevertheless, it's still it's still quite a low stat, right? You know, so there's quite a lot of development work to do, and at all levels in our organisation, and particularly now with the pandemic and the way it is, um, or, or the way we are growing out of pandemic and trying to figure out what the you know, what this new normal world looks like. Um, uh, and, and, and I guess tools like this are really helpful. And Rob, I'm just sort of coming back onto this this whole thing about the prediction of people is a risky business and bringing out the very best version of ourselves my guess is that these kind of tools really help to kind of piece together some of the bits that we might not be self-aware of and to bring them to the fore understand our personality a little bit more you know get to grips with our behavioral preferences and our tendencies and is that something about our character then rob you know does that what does that say about our character is this a character thing we're talking about here or is it just thoughts and behaviors Tell us a bit no, more. So, uh, uh, absolutely. We look at character. <clears throat> yeah. We don't look at personality anymore. Okay. What is the character? What's the, 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 the onion when you peel back <laughs> those layers that's in there yeah. so you fully understand yourself? Uh, but also very important to be accurate with it. So, again, going back to DISC and others, fantastic. <laughs> here, being yeah. task-led. I think we might just be losing Rob again in a minute. So um, just, yeah, we've lost him again for a minute. So <laughs> he'll just join us in a nanosecond. Just bear with us just for a moment while he's he's wrestling with a with a dodgy network his end. So uh, here we go. Reassign him. There we go, Rob. Yeah. Are you back online, Rob? Hopefully the last time you say he's back in the house for today. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, we've, we're coping very well with it all, so uh, so no no bother at all. So, uh, yeah, great. Listen, Rob, I know you've got to get a train very shortly. Um, so just I, I, if we need to cut short, let me know. But how does the discovery process instrument really help to promote high performance then in this rapidly changing world? You know, talk us a little bit about that before you disappear. Yeah. Uh, it's highly accurate. Uh, yeah. it's value metrics so it's mathematical okay. and we've had over, over 100 validations now of the tool 94.8% accuracy so you've got absolute truth to work with uh, to the, of the basis is the first thing that starts to come out and we look at four separate areas but they're intrinsically linked uh, to, to that so we look at how self-aware you are your, your talent and being authentic and being authentic isn't about being yourself all the time. It's, it is about that to reduce stress, but also how do you shift to land information to someone else and go back and be yourself, but you're in control of it. How you think and make decisions, which is extremely important because that's the beginning of how everything starts. And then we look at what motivates you, the seven motivations that start to engage people and drive uh, the outputs. They want it, You want to get out of bed when you have the right environment. And then we show the disc elements far more accurately of your natural state and the adapted states that start to come together. That full picture starts to give you an understanding, a validation and illumination of yourself and others. And then we also have a, a system that sits on top of this, Andrew, which may be of interest as well, that organizations can use as a performance management tool so you can start to track and see how people are performing and it enables you to become accountable where a lot of profiling comes on a report and then ends up getting filed. Yeah. I'm just looking at your own tool here. Is this what you're talking about? These kind of metrics here that we've got, yeah, this, got some this diagrams is what, yeah, here. This is, this is one example on mm. the emotional intelligence side of our intrinsic, extrinsic, and systemic thinking. So we can show how clearly someone thinks. Your filing system, your subconscious filing system, which is really wow. 
And these colours here relate to the disc profile, I'm guessing. I've just lost Rob again, I think. <laughs> so I'm guessing that these colours here on these circles relate to, to various bits of the uh, the disc profile. While we're on, um, LinkedIn user is actually Graham Rose. So thanks, Graham. Um, you've just come through for whatever reason as a as a LinkedIn user this morning. So apologies for not using your name, but I've just realised I've just joined the dots here by looking at various streams. So yeah, we were just looking at these circles here with the percentages in them. And my guess is that these are the color preferences around the um the the, the disc tool here is that correct rob yeah no no it's nope. in the sense of it's not linked by colors what we have up there is is a red amber green system yeah and what we're looking at is green is good and healthy amber is still a very very uh, small there's a couple of things to check in on okay and, red, and if red comes up it just means there's a big question to ask so gotcha not right or wrong so we're measuring those elements that come out and the, and the thinking patterns, both externally and internally. Okay. Here, as you bring up here, is, is an example of our motivations. What engages us? And again, mm. they're not linked in color to across to disk, but up here on the top right, if I just show an example, that is a, a motivation called political. It's about being, it's the power and control of your destiny. So disk, for instance, could show a very low red dominance. So someone may say, well, they're not... Uh, they're not driving for the front, they're not leading for, uh, and getting stuck in, and they're not a big driver. But underneath, in their motivations, they are strong as anything. They just don't have to show it externally in observation of behavior or communication, they're strong. But they are very, very strong internally. You're not gonna walk all over them. So me okay. as a strong dominant person, I might get a slight elbow, uh, probably in my knee with the height I am, uh, six foot seven, <laughs> but uh, stop playing around, Scotty, behave yourself. You know, the, yeah, the, Scotty. The, 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 the blue one at the top is economic. So this is driven by brand, reputation, financial return, okay, to, to where they are and how they build on it. Really important to have that environment. The brown up there is about theoretical, the knowledge, the drive, regardless of learning and understanding. We see this hugely in engineering, but can mm. cause a lot of procrastination. So these motivators actually are, are even more important than emotional intelligence about how people engage. And when these disengage, they disengage at work. And we wow. see it consistently in professional sport and in business. Brilliant. And I think that, and the last one then connects to the disk outputs uh, of the graph uh, that gives you the input of how then people are natural and adaptive behaviors. But we see it because it's linked mathematically even more accurate. Really interesting. Yeah, thank you. Wow. So that's how the two link the discovery process, which gives you the detailed information and the disk, yeah. which then brings you back to your yeah. personality and your character Absolutely. profile and, and your and preferences. And one of the other things that we do, Andrew, which I think is quite important, I think the, the modern world needs to adapt the tools to what's out there, COVID and others that are starting to affect us. Really so how do point. we get the tools? And we can actually configure reports to clients' competency measurements. So you don't take the report as it is. We can, you can do with set preferences, but we can configure across. And we're now even exploring into education. And we're very close to working with a worldwide school to become the leading school of emotional intelligence because they see the... EQ uh, of working, understanding people, understanding how you move around and work it, uh, just as powerful as as strong as the IQ, the intelligent quotient, which we're generally born with on the mathematical side. And they're seeing it as help enabling the rite of passage and enabling better relationships and of understanding between te teachers and pupils as they start yeah. to go on their new journey. So the key here is that, that we need to evolve our profiling tools to really demonstrate, well, to show and to measure and to help us to see you know, those gear changes that you talked about earlier when things hit us from left field like a pandemic, you know, then how, do, how are we coping and what gear shift are we doing and you know, what might be a better gear shift in terms of, of traffic light systems, I'm guessing, is what your, your discovery process aims to do. And um, it sounds really fascinating. So thank you, Rob, for that outline. Um, brilliant to have you on the show. Um, I hope you guys out there have found that useful and interesting. Um, yeah, Graham Rose says fascinating insights. Thank you. Thanks, Graham, for that. So thanks, Rob. Look, Rob's freebie for you folks out there. Look, he's got a giveaway today on um, you try, try this discovery process for yourselves. Um, for the first five people to respond in the comments on the LinkedIn live event at the end of the live stream show, we'll get a free disc stroke discovery process profile uh, Rob will will happily um, forward to you for you to learn a little bit about yourself um, so from my side you know I'm founder of a uh, CEO community called inspired CEOs and if you're a CEO business owner uh, with staff then I'd love to invite you to a free two-week 
join before you know join our community and experience how game-changing conversations and hot seats simply contact me for discussion try before you buy what's not to like um, also please contact me if you want any help and developing high performance teamwork for your business and you can find more details on my website i'll put links into the description later so thank you again rob um if you need to shoot, that's absolutely fine. I'm just finishing up right now. So just to let you know, look, quickly, quick word on Leaders Live before I talk about what's happening next week. Um, oh, and Graham's just asked for a requesting a profile. Please, Rob, so you got your first request no, there. Thank you. And, and I will add, Andrew, quickly. Yeah. Uh, you're not just going to get the report. I will ensure I spend an hour with you translating and bringing the context the report hey. individually to everyone as well even more better there you go graham you've got even more okay. even more value there so and fantastic I, and I'm, I'm going to thank you andrew and to everyone that's come on today for uh, giving up time to listen to me uh, and share what we do and we're passionate about it uh, but i have to go up now and bring a team dynamic session in london using the uh, the outputs the profile so thank you again and yeah. uh, have a great day no problem yeah thanks see you see you cheers, and cheers for now so I'll, I'll just finish up here while we, so, so Rob's just gone from the call. So look, you know, next week we've got um, lead uh, on Tuesday, the 16th of November, we've got David Wilkes and he's been in the room today as well. Fellow Brummy, I think. And um, we will be chatting about all things podcasting and how this can help your business. And David runs a successful podcast show called Next Steps for Business. So I'm sure that will be useful for everybody and something really different and interesting too. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, so you know, I'm hoping that you will be too. So be there or be square, folks. Um, look, I set this channel up just for a purpose of edutainment and to explore high performance topics via informal, fun, back and forth, fast paced, interesting people, just like we had with Rob just a few moments ago, um, with a mindset and a passion to help leaders and businesses succeed, succeed in these rapidly changing times. And you're going to be living under a rock if you didn't realise that we're going through rapidly changing times. And the people factor is really an important part of that. And this whole thing about, you know, this innate I to the power of we is something I talk a lot about. So that's all for now, folks. It's a goodbye from me. And uh, Rob said good good day from us already. So see you again next week, folks. And thank you again, folks, for dialing in again and your patience that the whole system fell over yesterday with audio issues. So I hope you enjoyed that show and um, be available on Catch Up from now on. And uh, please, if you want a profile, uh, please pop those in the comments as we're um, just finishing up. So the, the feed will still be available on replay. So just pop your comments on there when you want a free profile from Rob. OK, cheers for now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers for now. Bye bye.